Good evening, world. I'm Nate Yurl, and I'm bringing you the news straight from our planet through Dino News Network. Tonight, stop story. We follow the beloved extinct thylacine through its journey towards unextinction. With help from field reporter, the lovely Dina Soar, we will be able to revisit each groundbreaking moment in this amazing adventure. It all began in a hot, cold summer day in May 2002 at the Australian Museum in Sydney where geneticists successfully replicated thylacine DNA. I was there. But Dina Soar is there currently at this hotbed of scientific research. Dina, how's it looking there? Well, Nate, there's actually nothing going on here. In February 2005, they had completely abandoned the project, stating that the DNA was too poor and that it was taking too much money to finance the project. Oh, oh. well that is a nuts kicker. Straight shot. Not so much, Nate. In May of that year, the project was revived by former museum director Michael Archer and his small team of scientists. Since then, they've been working in a private lab trying to reconstruct the thylacine DNA. It, it's in your notes, Nate. <laughs> oh? Oh, yes it is. It says here that those scientists are using a thylacine embryo over 140 years old preserved in a jar of alcohol. According to Professor Archer, the DNA in that embryo has the potential to bring the entire th species of thylacines back. Well, look at that. Seems like they've got the whole thing under control. We'll have thylacines back in no time. Right, Dina? Well, Nate, I'm now here at the lab, and it seems to be facing several challenges. For example, it's difficult to reconstruct the chromosomes, and the scientists don't know how to code for the thylacine proteins. Also, the DNA is hard to get viable, since it's been pickled. Lastly, they've been having trouble finding a surrogate for a possible thylacine embryo. They believe that the Tasmanian devil may work, but they aren't sure yet. Ouch! Two for two there. You Actually, Nate, don't lose hope. In 2008, a team of researchers reported that they managed to restore the functionality of gene cold 2A1 enhancer obtained from the pickled thylacine. That genetic material was found working in transgenetic mice. The, the research enhanced hopes to eventually restore the population of thylacines. It makes perfect sense! Yep, and later that year another group of researchers successfully sequenced the complete thylacine mitochondrial genome for two museum speci specimens. This success suggests that they are feasible to sequence the complete thylacine nuclear genome from museum specimens. Oh, thank God. Well, I think that's great. The people of Tasmania will certainly be happy as clams to hear that the thylacine will be back soon. Many Tasmanians are eager to see its existence, and they have evidenced this with tributes such as stuffed animals and the very own Tasmanian coat of arms. Er, there are still some skeptics, Nate. What? Come on! Sorry, Nate, but, but not everyone has bought those stuffed animals. Some believe that it's a waste of time and money to bring the thylacine species back. And others believe that these creatures might not even be extinct. That's preposterous. If thylacines existed, I would have two living at home. They would sleep in my own bed, for God's sake. Well, thanks, Dina. So as you can see, folks, the battle for thylacines is still ongoing, and I urge you all in a non-biased way to join that fight. For your news here on Diner News Network, I'm Nature. Good night, world.